Hello learners, I welcome you all to this class and uh, topic for today's discussion is evolution of marketing. This is basically uh, a part of our uh, AMK course, AMK01 course under BCom general program and under BCom CBCS it is a part of the course code BCOE142 and the name of the uh, subject is marketing. So let us quickly see what all are we going to discuss right in this particular session. So first we'll try to understand what market is, then we'll try to learn what is marketing, then we'll go to evolution gradually and we'll learn about product production concept of marketing, product concept of marketing, selling concept of marketing and societal concept of marketing. So before we actually go to the core discussion that is evolution of marketing, let us quickly understand what is a market. If you talk to someone, if you talk in a common parlance, uh, if you talk of a market, people will say that yes, it is a place where there are buyers, there are sellers and they meet together and uh, you know, buy, buyers they buy things and sellers they sell things, so that is a market. We have seen the kind of transition in the concept of market also, if we see the development of the market over the period of time. So we are trying to define market here in two senses, one is the traditional sense and the other is modern sense. So we'll see first what is a market in traditional sense. So in traditional sense, market is a place where buyers and sellers meet to exchange goods, services and other relevant information. We'll come to that also, what, what do I mean with the other relevant information? Because when we define product, we'll see what all comprises of product. So I'm leaving this part of discussion to that particular session. Second, we see that in traditional sense, market is a physical place. So a physical existence is necessary, is important. So there's a place where sellers are already there or sellers come and then buyers also come. They meet together and then they, uh, there is some transaction which is taking place between them. So it is a place where commodities are bought and sold at retail or wholesale prices. Again retail price or wholesale price, this is, a, uh, this is a topic of discussion which we'll be taking later on in the next sessions. Thus we can say in traditional sense that market is thought to be a place consisting of a number of big and small shops, stalls and even hawkers selling various types of goods and services. So this was market in traditional sense. But friends, with the advent of information technology revolution, we have seen the face of market, the whole concept of market or definition of market is being changed. Now it is not restricted to physical place only, right? So in modern sense, market may be virtual. Market refers to a market for a commodity or commodities. And again, when I say commodity, I'm trying to uh, tell both the commodities tangible and intangible. Tangible commodities which are uh, commonly uh, known as goods and intangible commodities which are known as services. In traditional sense market refers to an arrangement whereby buyers and sellers they come in close contact with each other directly or indirectly to sell and buy goods. They come in contact but they don't uh, need to meet physically, right? Buyers and sellers need not personally meet each other at a particular place. They may contact each other by any means such as telephone or telex and there are various means through which they can contact or communicate to each other. In modern uh, sense, market refers to the whole area of operation of demand and supply. It can be the entire world, it can be the entire globe. It refers to the conditions and commercial relationships that facilitates transactions between buyers and sellers. So that uh, we can see that the concept of you know the market itself is changing. Then now let us see what is marketing. Again, if you talk to a common uh, you know a layman, and if you talk in a common parlance, if you ask what marketing is, people can say shopping is marketing. If you ask marketing experts. Somebody can say it is a perspective, somebody can say it is a scheme, somebody can say it is a process. So likewise you see that there is no single answer to this question, what is marketing? Why? Because the process of marketing, the entire functioning of marketing has seen a gradual change over the period of time. When I say gradual change over the period of time, 
In this session, we'll divide that period of time into uh, two parts. One is pre-industrial revolution era and the other is post-industrial revolution era, right? So when we understand the evolution of marketing, then only we can understand what really marketing is and what all activities, you know, comprise of marketing. So that is why in understanding evolution of marketing is very, very important. So you can understand marketing and you can strategize, you can devise your strategies accordingly. Whenever I try to explain evolution of marketing, I try to show it through a paradigm shift from cat approach to care approach to scare approach. Cat is consumers are thing. Consumers are something and they need to be catered. Care is C-A-R-E, that is C for consumers, A for R, R for really and E for everything. So that is scare approach. And then the paradigm shift came to scare approach. Society and consumers are really everything, S-C-A-R-E. S for society, C for consumers, A for R, R for real and E for everything. So in the discussion, at the end of it, you will understand how this whole paradigm shift has taken place from cat approach to care approach to scare approach. So let us quickly see what are the marketing evolution phases. As I said, I have divided the entire period, right? Uh, between two uh, parts. One is pre-industrial revolution era and the second is post-industrial revolution era, right? So if we again try to divide the post-industrial evolution era, we can see certain changes in the market dynamics. So those changes, you know, gave concept to various approaches of marketing and those can be classified as production concept, product concept, selling concept, marketing concept and societal marketing concept. Again, I would say, since I'm uh, telling again and again that we are dividing the era into two parts, one is pre-industrial revolution era and the other is post-industrial revolution era, let us see what was the scenario in pre-industrial revolution era, right? Since the time immemorial trade is taking place, commerce is there, right? When there was no medium of exchange such as money, then barter system was there in the market. So for the transaction, barter system was used. Was used. So barter system means use of one commodity for exchange of other commodity, right? So barter system was there. Uh, that had the two people, two set of people or two parties, they'll meet together. They would have something to offer to each other and that something would have some value also, right? And then they will offer to each. For, inst for instance, suppose I am a farmer, right? And I am uh, and I'm growing wheat. And somebody is an artisan, he or she is making baskets. So I want basket, I have surplus of wheat and the artisan has surplus of baskets. So if we, I need basket and this artisan needs wheat, the, uh, according to the barter system, I'll give some wheat and take basket from the artisan. So that was barter system. But with the advent of money, again, the face of market changed, right? The style of marketing changed, right? And then came, after a certain period of time, you know, there were you know, different yeah, changing dynamics in the market. People were experiencing, you know, different kind of changes in the market. And then industrial revolution began. And believe me, this industrial revolution changed the face of the whole world and how we'll see. So the first concept that we are going to discuss is the production concept. Again, of the post-industrial revolution era, the four concepts are there, production, product, society, marketing, and societal concept. So the very first concept that we are uh, going to talk is industrial concept. Industrial revolution began and industrial revolution began, led to huge production of goods and goods or commodities, right? And when there was huge production of commodities, the supplies were also higher. And not only that, with huge production, you can see more employment generation also. And more employment generation means increase in purchasing power because people are getting jobs. And when people are getting jobs, they, their purchasing power is increased, right? So more purchasing power. And more purchasing power lead to higher demand. Higher demand, again, production will be higher. So this way, the cycle, you know, is completing. 
So something, one thing is leading to the other. Huge production is leading to, you know, huge production again, right? So this was the production concept. As I said, the basic focus of all the marketers or I would say producers, right, was to make as much, you know, quantity of the commodity and produce as much of the quantity uh, of the commodity possible and it can be thrown to the customers, right? So everybody was like, every producer was like, you know, making more and more commodity. So when more and more commodities were being made, so you can reap the economies of large scale. Everyone knows it. Economy of large scale can be reaped if, the, if your production volume is higher. And economy of large scale gives you one edge that you can price your commodities lower because your cost of production comes down, right? So in production concept, you know, the producer, they believed that consumer favor all those products that are widely avail available and at low prices. So they tried to do that only. And as I said, at, uh, with the advent of industrial revolution, this, you know, kind of uh, philosophy, this kind of approach started taking place in the market. And it was applicable when there was no competition and market was dominated by sellers. It was a seller's market. So what generally happens in this kind of approach of marketing? Lower price is there and ease of availability, uh, availability of a product. It may be tangible, it, it may be intangible, product can be both. So the uh, products were easily available to the consumers, right? And then manager aimed at higher production effic efficiency. Higher production efficiency means with the lesser resources, you try to produce more and that led to reduced cost. Easy availability of products because of the wide distribution coverage. The production concept is only effective, but one, one should always remember that this uh, concept is only effective when demand is greater than supply, right? Demand is great and supply is not as much as uh, it is demanded in the market, then people will take, customers will take anything which is available in the market, irrespective of uh, the quality and other things, right? But yes, please remember, customers are Price, price sensitive, by and large they are price sensitive. So this thing we can never forget as a marketer, right? If we see the shortcomings of this particular approach, the producers produced goods excessively and the product differentiation became difficult. All the products were, you know, more or less similar to each other because it was bulk production, it was huge production. So product differentiation became difficult and when product differentiation became difficult, Consumers, customers also, they also uh, tend to get confused as to what to choose, which producer to go. Lower quality of products were produced, you know, because we wanted to uh, keep the prices lower, the marketer wanted to keep the prices lower, so they had to compromise with the quality of products that resulted into uh, the less durability of the products. And then consumers started looking for good and quality products. This kind of change, right, in the consumer's mind, it paved the way for another approach of marketing, which is called as product, you know, concept of marketing. So product concept of marketing, if we uh, discuss, as I said, now, now this is the era, right? That consumer wanted to differentiate between them. They really wanted to see some kind of differentiation in the market in terms of quality also in terms of the uniqueness of the product also. So they were looking for some kind of changes in the products. So this approach or this thought of the consumers, this market dynamism, they gave importance to the quality of product. Now producers, they tried to improve the quality of product because they understood unless they are going to improve the quality of product, they may not be able to stay in the market, number one, and compete with the rivals in the market. So the focus was now on making superior products. When I say superior products, that means they try to be innovative in terms of product features. So innovative product features were uh, given focus at that particular time. Insufficient, again, insufficient attention to what do consumers really need and want. Please understand consumer and customer, although there is a difference, but here for this session, I am taking both, you know, it as one and same. So, they 
they assume that consumer wanted wants you know high quality of product improved quality of product uniqueness in the product but they fail to understand they fail to realize that what actually customers want do they want high quality of product were they ready to pay higher price also for the product so this kind of problem you know started seeping in it worked for a certain period of time this approach of marketing worked but after a period of time this kind of problem seeped in right and this paved way to again the other concept of marketing right so the shortcomings of this approach is no emphasis of marketing communication the uh, all the focus was with the you know creating innovative product features adding quality to the products but how should you communicate how do you communicate it to the to the customers that is also important how do the customers know that your product is different from the others they did not give much attention to this and this affected the reach of goods to the customers customers they were not aware and emphasis on quality of goods resulted in higher prices and now the need was felt to aggressively communicate about the innovative product features then started then my producer started realizing that we need to communicate to the customers that yes we are there with this particular kind of product which is different from others and it has certain added features certain added quality which you would like to have and, and even if the prices are, are higher there is a genuine reason and you would you as a customer would love to pay higher prices for this particular you know commodity they needed to communicate it to the customers aggressively and they could sense this and this paved way for the uh, other concept of uh, marketing approach that was the selling concept here the assumption was made that people don't buy products unless it is aggressively promoted unless it is you know aggressively and efficiently communicated to the customers customers won't come and buy your product so the main focus of the manager was to inform request or contact consumers to make them buy the product right and high product promotion you know they started taking place and when they started taking place consumers were actually aware of the availability of the product product and resultantly their sales you know they also went higher but uh, let me uh, tell you something that at this stage at this particular duration of time span of time more and more focus you know was or in, an importance was given to salesmanship they try to you know emphasize on door to door selling and when i say door to door selling that means it involves cost and anything which involves cost ends up in increasing the prices of the commodity and consumer is by and large price sensitive so after some time you know in the market again there was some kind of uh, disruptions again there was some kind of chaos i would say and the other kind of need was felt in the market so if we see the shortcomings of this particular approach of marketing the selling concept of marketing there was you know a strong need for internal marketing if you are hiring a sales uh, person if you are hiring hiring sales people and you want them uh, to go door to door for selling their products then you need to do internal marketing also internal marketing quickly i will tell you that the salesman should believe that actually this product is good that actually this product product has added quality or added value which is not there with the uh, products of the competitors unless they are convinced they cannot convince to the convince the customers so they have to be convinced first so internal the need for internal marketing was felt using salesman became costly as i discussed earlier also and then a need was felt to use new ways and techniques for product promotion then people started looking for you know other ways what are the other means for the product promotion in the market and now this paved the way for the marketing concept which is widely widely used right so now the clarity of you know the customers understanding and the clarity of the producers both improved now producers uh, started rea to realize that you cannot give anything to the consumers you cannot provide anything to the customers they are not going to buy it if you actually want them to buy your products if you actually want them to uh, like your products 
then you have to understand the needs of the customer. So understanding the needs of the customer, you know, that took or that gained greater importance and emphasis also. And when I say understanding the need of the customer, it is all kinds of need. It is the uh, need which is there for a particular commodity or service. In what form do they want, right? At what pace do they want? At what price do they want? How really, uh, you know, they would be affected uh, by the way of communication? What media would be better for them? So the producer realized that it is important to understand each and every aspect of the customer, right? If we really want to cater to the customer and if we really want to excel in the market or forget about, you know, excelling in the market, even staying in the market. So now the consumer, the customer became the king, which is prevailing even today, right? The customer is the king. And this concept, the customer is the king started gaining attention. It is during this time when marketing mix was developed and the promotion mix was developed. Right? Marketing mix, again I, I would say, like what is the shape of the product? What is the size of the product? What is the color or physical, you know, appearance of the product that would appeal to the customer? Needs to be identified, again. So product, four P's, marketing mix consists of four P's. Again, we'll discuss it in separate sessions. That those four P's are product, price, promotion, place, or it is also called as physical distribution. Right? So those, these four P's and decision making regarding those, these four P's, this became very, very important. And again, in these four P's, the most important part was promotion. Like uh, promotion means communicating to the customers, the flow of communication. So promotion, the concept of promotion mix was also developed. That yes, there are various media and various media can be used for various kinds of products for various kinds of customers. The preference of customers again can be different for the choice of media also. So a producer has to understand all the uh, concepts, all the things of the customers so as they can or he or she can design the product and devise the whole strategy of marketing accordingly, right? So. In product marketing concept, now the assumption is that people buy product or services if they are needed and if it suits the purse of the consumers, right? They are not going to buy anything, they will only buy if it is needed by them. So identification of need is important. And then the focus on determining the needs and wants of target markets and delivering the desired satisfaction more effectively and efficiently than the competitors. Again, target market. because. Now you have to, now the uh, producers or marketers, they started to realize that first of all, to understand customer properly, we need to set our target customers. We need to identify who are the target customers. So once you identify who are the target customers, then you try to analyze, you know, their tastes, their preferences, their choices, their purse and everything. So the aim of the producers, the aim of the marketer became consumer satisfaction, that the consumers should be satisfied and a, a, a satisfied customer will bring more and more business to the, you know, producer or to the company. So this concept implies that low price, high quality, attractive features, better performance and even rigorous promotional and selling efforts fail if the needs of the customers are not identified and if the needs are not satisfied, right? This in, during this time and this happened all because the IT revolution, right? Information and technology revolution. Any kind of information is available to anyone. And not only that, it has facilitated the market, it has facilitated the whole trade, the whole commerce into an enormous way. Sitting here at the click of one button, I can order anything from anywhere across the globe and I can get it. Likewise, on the click of one button, the producer can get order from the customer who is sitting in any corner of the globe, right? So this information technology also played a very, very important role and all these changes, they were to be brought because of that. 
So if we talk of this concept of marketing, I would say that there are more, uh, four more important pillars or four most important pillars in this kind of approach. One is the target market and then to identify the customer needs and then integrated marketing and profitability. You have to integrate it. That means we need to reach at a win-win situation wherein as a producer is also winning and the consumers are also winning. So unless you can create this kind of position, unless you can create this kind of situation, you cannot succeed in the market as a producer or as a marketer, right? So now in this approach, in this concept of marketing, the focus is more on the de de on delivering better value proposition in comparison to the competitors, right? If you talk of the recent time, I would say that consumer satisfaction is also not sufficient. The consumer delight, the customer delight is the term which is to be gained and customer delight is what? I need something, right? And if I don't get it, then there is a gap and this gap is negative, unfavorable, right? So it leads to dissatisfaction of the customers. I'm a customer and I need something and I get exactly what I wanted, right? So this means what? I am satisfied. My need is being satisfied. So this leads to customer satisfaction. But imagine a situation where a customer needs something and what is being delivered to him or her is much more higher than what he was actually needing. So this will result into customer delight. So now the focus of the marketer is to gain that customer delight, right? Because now it is uh, considered important to retain a customer in the market. And to retain the customer in the market, it is important to uh, have, you know, delighted customers with you, right? So again, if we saw the elements of, uh, you know, this approach of marketing or marketing concepts of marketing, I would say that marketing oriented business starts with the customers, finds out what they want and then produces it for them. And not only produces, see, they, they identify the target market, right? And then trying to identify the needs of the customer. First you identify the customer, then you're trying to identify the needs of the customer, then you're producing, the, uh, pr producing the products accordingly, pricing it accordingly, right? And then you are making it available to the customers easily. And then you're also taking feedback because this will tell you whether you need to improve something or it is going okay with you. So this is one thing. And as I said, there are four important pillars in this concept of marketing. The one is target market, customer needs, integrated marketing and profitability. So target market is companies do best when they segment the total market and prepare tailored marketing programs. As a company, as a business organization, you have your own strengths and weaknesses. So according to your own strengths and weaknesses, you have to decide whether you want to cater to the whole market, to the entire market as a whole, or you want to cater to a particular segment to the market, segment of the market, or what you actually need to do. So first of all, we need to identify the target market. What shall be the target market for my kind of product and my kind of company? And then identifying customer needs. Third, integrated marketing, that is management must integrate all its activities in order to develop programs, to satisfy the customer wants and again not only satisfy but to delight the customer right and then profitability because there is no free lunch in the world right we are talking commerce so profitability is to be there so the management must be guided by long range profit goals rather than you know being interested in quick sales so that is also very very important and then you know gradually with the changes in uh, the scenario of the uh, Mother Earth, we see the scenario of the society as a whole. Now there is a need which is felt, you know, to the more holistic kind of marketing, which is not only concentrating on the customer's delight, which is not only concentrating, you know, on identifying the needs and want of the customers, but also understand and realize what society really needs and how the society can be better what contribution you as a producer, you as a marketer can make to improve the society, right? 
So this paved way for societal marketing concepts. So nowadays, every marketer, every producer is, you know, uh, working more or again by and large, the producers or marketers are working with this kind of concept that is social marketing concept, right? Wherein, along with the customers, the society's welfare is also given importance, right? So this is societal marketing concept. The aim now is being shifted from complete customer satisfaction to customer welfare as, a, uh, uh, welfare as well as social welfare. And then marketers felt that they too can play a role in contributing for social welfare. So let us contribute. And the management focus is to now integrate the firm's resources and activities to develop program to meet these individual consumers or customers and social needs. So again, please let me uh, clear one thing that it is not that the production concept of marketing is vanished completely or product concept of marketing is vanished, com uh, vanished completely or selling concept of market is, you know, marketing is vanished completely. In different, different circumstances, in different, different situations, different approach of marketing is being used. But again, I would say that by and large, the societal marketing concept is in practice, which is also termed as holistic marketing, right? So these were the you know, four phases of uh, evolution of marketing, I would say. If, if we try to quickly, you know, uh, summarize the whole evolution, I would say that in production concept, the aim was to reduce cost and profits will follow. That was the motto. In the second concept, that is product concept, a good product will sell itself. So, focus on the quality. The third, selling concept or sales concept, aggressive sales, you know, tactics, tactics or aggressively pushing the products can be, it can work. And then came marketing concept when the customer is the king notion got the attention and then societal uh, marketing concept wherein the customers and so society's well-being is utmost important. So now you can see the paradigm shift from cat to care to scare. C-A-T, customers are thing. To care. C A R E, C for customers, A for R, R for really and E for everything. Customers are really everything. Customer became the pivotal, central point to scare not only customers, society. If society is there, customers will be there. So society and customers, S C A R E again, society and customers are really everything. So this is the whole paradigm shift which we have seen in the evolution of marketing. Before ending this session, I would uh, like to give you some food for thought so that in the next session when we are coming, you, are, you can come prepared and you will be able to, you know, uh, debate or maybe uh, send your queries on these particular topics that is relationship marketing, borderless marketing and online marketing. It is not necessary that I am going to talk on these two topics in the coming session, but till the time we meet again. Please try to look for, you know, the relationship marketing and the borderless marketing and how it is taking place in nowadays context. So, see you next session. Happy learning.